yes, this is the exciting period as always. Yes, go out, look, look for the darker part of the sky. Unfortunately, if there's street lights and things around, it's going to cause a bit of a problem because it puts that glow in the air. Um, but darker part of the sky, and you'll see shooting stars. Could be a hundred, between 100 and 200 shooting stars per hour during the peak period, but that's in the darkest part of the sky. So you'll see less than that. You'll see just the brighter ones in areas where the sky is a little bit brighter. Uh, and these, of course, are the remains of Comet Swift-Tuttle, uh, has an orbit of about 133 years. And uh, when comets get to the sun, they sublimate. The ice is turned directly from a solid to a gas without a liquid phase. And dust and ice particles come off it, forming the great tail. And that, of course, puts it like a torus around the sun uh, in the position of the orbit of Swift-Tuttle. But there are clumps of this material. And every year at this time, the Earth passes through one of these clumps and the bits of material then enter the Earth's atmosphere and, and light up the night sky as these shooting stars. ...and display, Andy, of course, Britain being Britain. We're always dependent on the, on the ruddy weather, aren't we? Um, so these great things are happening, and it's always <laughs> cloudy. Any idea what the outlook's going to be and where the best place in Britain to mm. catch the spectacle is going to be? That's a good question because we've got speckly cloud at the moment. I mean, last night I, I, I was out all night till, till actually I haven't been really to bed yet and um, uh, looking out. But unfortunately, the cloud came and it covered most of it off. Um, so you just got to keep looking at the weather forecast because it is actually cloud all over the place. And then in some places, it's going to suddenly clear. So like everything else, it's hit and miss really sadly with these things. I mean, mm. it is worth going out. I mean, bearing in mind in the 1980s, I observed the um, uh, Perseids from the centre of Birmingham. Bear that in mind, the centre of Birmingham. And yet we actually had a spectacular sight of very bright meteors going right across the sky so even with light cloud you can actually sometimes see something illuminating the cloud from behind so mm. it can be worth going anyway even if you've got light cloud mm. um, but go to the darkest place you possibly can uh, being safe of course and look in the darkest part of the sky uh, mm. don't just look towards the constellation Perseus that's where the tails appear to originate from but they can be anywhere across the sky Mm. Oh, it sounds like an absolute treat for the mm. eyes, Andy. Do we need a telescope to, to see this meteor shower or is the naked eye good enough? Yeah, naked eye is good enough. Get yourself a nice chair to lean back in. Uh, a deck chair will do fine and lie back. Uh, make sure you've got something to drink to keep yourself going, some nibbles and things like that. That's why it's a great period of time this is for it. It's, it's one for getting through three or four hot dogs or something like that. But, yes, no naked. It's just a naked eye observation. Just lie back and enjoy the scene. People with cameras, of course, can set their B settings on it and try to capture them going across the sky as well. That's always good fun to play. And this is one of the best astronomical events really for the public because it's something you can actually do some astronomical societies of course bring telescopes out with them so they can actually do public observing sessions and if you look up look it up online to see if your local astronomical society is doing that because that's well worth doing and you have a lot of fun at the same time